So everyone knows that any landing you could walk away from is a good one, but come on, you want to be better than that. Today we're going to teach you how to land at night. The number one thing you need to know about night landings is when you can log them as night landings. When do they actually qualify as night landings? And there's two conditions for that. The first is they're going to have to be one hour after sunset and one hour before sunrise at least. And the second is they're going to have to be to a full stop. So doing a touch and go doesn't count for a night landing. The second thing I want to talk about with night landings is the, called the black hole effect. Now there's a bunch of different night disorientations and kind of uh, aeromedical issues that we did discuss when we're talking about night flying in general, but when we go into talking about landings, the black hole effect is one of the most prominent. It's also called the featureless terrain effect, and essentially what it means is when I'm in the cockpit and I'm looking out, whether you know it or not, you're using all these subtle light cues when you're flying VFR from reflections of light off of the terrain and shadows and that kind of stuff to be able to make your approach to land. At night, you lose all of that. You're not getting any reflections. There is something called celestial illumination, which is the light reflected off of the moon or the light given off by distant stars, that kind of thing. And that will help illuminate the terrain a little bit, but especially on very dark nights or extremely featureless terrains, uh, you can get this black hole effect. And what that does is it makes you think that the airplane is higher than it actually is. And if you're used to monitoring your instruments, that may not be as big of a deal. But when you're coming in to land, when you're not in that cruise flight anymore, trying to maintain a specific altitude, that black hole effect can really sneak up and get you. And what'll end up happening is you'll maybe put the airplane down pretty hard because you started your round out late because you thought you were higher than you actually are. So you rounded out too late and really kind of whacked the ground. Maybe your approach is a little shallower and you have the potential of impact in the terrain before you reach the runway. Now, those are obviously severe cases. Most of the time what's going to happen is your landings aren't going to be as buttery as they normally are. And that's again just because you're not used to the way that the light is being reflected back at you. Now, all of this can be overcome with experience and just trusting your instruments and trusting your aircraft lighting, which is what we're going to talk about next. So the number three thing, the last thing that I want you to know about landing at night is how to be courteous with your lights and how to use your lights. So again, per the FARs, there are special types of lights that we need to have required in order to be eligible for VFR night operations. And some of those are pretty bright, and that includes maybe a landing light if you're doing it for compensation or higher, or flight instruction. And those lights especially are extremely bright. Now, even the taxi lights, they're generally pointed a little down more towards the ground and they're spread out wider. So the, the landing light lens has some stripes on it that disperse the light out so it gives kind of a softer light over a wider area. The landing lights are more of a spotlight and they go more straight ahead so I can see farther off and I can see from a higher altitude, for instance, when I'm coming in to land. Both of those lights combined with the wingtip strobes are very, very bright. And while they are required for those operations, using them is to the pilot's discretion to make sure that they don't blind other pilots. Now, your night vision is about, takes between 30 and 45 minutes to really settle into itself. So during the pre-flight, obviously, just looking out of these, looking to make sure these lights are working out of the corner of your eye is very good. But keep in mind that even though you're inside the aircraft and not getting blinded by those lights, everyone else is seeing those lights from outside. So if you're in the run-up area, if you're holding short, something like that, do the courteous thing, turn off your landing lights just for a minute, keep enough light so that you can tell if you're rolling, that kind of thing, while you're doing your run-up to make sure you've got control of the brake but you don't want to be blinding the plane across from you. Now, that's also the same thing when you're landing. When you're landing, you're number one priority. You're the only one that really needs to worry about, you know, is themselves. And so you're going to keep all your lights on for that, but then at the available opportunity, go ahead and turn off those landing lights, turn off those strobes, and just keep your taxi lights on if you have them when you're taxiing around the airport after you've exited the runway, again, so you're not blinding everyone else. And so that's the top three things that every student pilot should know about landing at night. If you have anything else you think we should have added, leave a comment down below and don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future content.